Hello. So we just saw that our objective in this course is to design digital signal processing systems to be able to transform signals. And we saw that the main problems was the problem of analysis, especially spectral analysis, and the problem of filtering. We also saw the, the advantages, especially performance. And we went over the fact that you need to have some background in LTI, linear time invariant system theory, and Fourier analysis. The idea that any signal can be decomposed into a sub of sinusoids. <laughs> so we are talking about signals and systems. What are these? Can we start working uh, a definition? So let's think about the concept of signal. What is a signal? How can we define it? For the purposes of this course, our working definition will be that a signal is an abstraction of any measurable quantity that is a function of one or more independent variables. So let me let me write this down. An abstraction. meaning it's an abstract concept of any measurable quantity that is a function of one or more independent variables. Such as time, space, etc. So we're going to denote that x of t when this is um, the independent variable is time. Let's do a couple of examples. So of course, any voltage, current, but let's go to um, things in the physical world. Sound, speech, I guess not sound. Any biomedical signal, electrocardiogram, your arterial blood pressure, and how it changes, intracranial pressure, pulse oximetry, all of those um, are signals. Um, I already mentioned voltage, current, anything, all electrical signals are going to be signals, of course, in all the communications. Signals. Images. Video. What you're going to see is just just how anything that you measure and that it changes, the stock market, meaning the time series of the closing prices of a particular security, all these are signals. And that's why the theory of signals and systems not only is totally fundamental to digital signal processing, fundamental courses and advanced courses, but also to control system design, to communications design, and then beyond electrical engineering to all to many other fields. Um, a most advanced study in engineering, going all the way to econometrics. Okay, when you're doing financial time series analysis, this is the same sort of techniques that you're applying. So we have a definition an abstraction of any measurable quantity that changes. Okay? And that can change with time, can change like voltage, current, communication systems, sound, speech, biomedical. It can change with the space, like an image, etc. The bottom part, the, the fundamental part, is that it's anything that we measure and it changes. Some of those are in their native form analog. And some of them may be digital in their native form, 
like you may have the um, image that you have in your computer is digital. The closing um, prices of a particular stock in the stock market is discrete time. Only happens at the closing time. Others are continuous. My speech right now. So let's classify the signals. So we can classify them as continuous. It's time, which I'm going to denote as when, when the independent variable is time, x of t, and time is a real, meaning belongs to real numbers. It's a continuous time. Okay? In between two numbers, you have an infinite amount of those. There are no gaps, so a continuous time signal will be the, math the type of signal that we are going to use to analyze anything that is in the analog world. Then you have discrete time. Time signals, which may be discrete natively, meaning they are always they are already sampled. The closing of the Apple stock. Right? Uh, as an example, an image in a computer, and and therefore we will use n in this case for the independent variable belongs to integers. Okay? So n is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as opposed to t, that is a real number. And some of those discrete time signals may be originally continuous time signal that we sample, meaning we measure at periodic intervals. And then you have digital signals. X of n, where n goes to c. So this is sample in time, discrete in time, as well as they are quantized. They do not have infinite precision, so to speak. So I'm going to put it x of n q to denote that they have been quantized. So let me develop this a little bit more. If we start with a continuous time signal, Okay, let's denote this like this. Okay. This is x of t, this is time. If we sampled, sampling is measuring. Okay, sampling is measuring at periodic intervals. So we may create x of n. Actually, let's do this. If we going to say, if we were to say, let's sample t at nts, where ts is the sampling period, okay? We're going to create x of nts, where ts is our sampling period. which is equal to one of the, over the sampling frequency. What we are doing is going from continuous time to discrete time, meaning we are taking when n is an integer, so zero, one, two, so at n equals zero, we are taking this point, then ts, taking this one, let's imagine that this is, one and this is minus one. This is one times ts, two ts, taking this one, three ts, we're taking this point, four ts, taking this point, etc. So what we are ending up with is an x of n, which is zero 
this one here I'm going to say 0 0.7 approximately it's a little bit less 0 0.6 minus 0 0.5 this point here minus 0 0.9 this point here da, 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 da. so we went from a continuous time signal by doing periodic sample, periodic measuring, to a discrete time signal. Okay, this was continuous, continuous time to discrete time. If then we quantize it, these amplitudes, with a finite number of bits, we arrive to a digital signal. Now, most of the mathematics we are going to develop either in continuous time or in discrete time, because to go from discrete time to digital, the only thing that you have there is the quantization. And with sufficient quantization, they are equal for all practical purposes. You can think of a discrete time of a digital signal as a discrete time signal where you have very high quantization. The difference of the two is a small error that gets smaller and smaller, the more number of bits that you have to do the quantization for that particular application. So that signals, it's going to be faster for systems. Systems, so if a signal is an abstraction of any measurable quantity, a system will be an abstraction of anything that acts on a signal to transform it, right? So signals are everywhere, and if something changes the signal, you have a system. So systems are going to be everywhere. So a definition for us is going to be an abstraction of anything that acts on signals to transform them. meaning to change the properties. We're going to denote that as with some transformation, like you have a signal X of T, so you had an X of T, if this continuous time, went through some system and you had something else. And you're going to denote that mathematically as some transformation on your X of T. Okay. You can classify them as the same way. Continuous time, discrete time, digital. Again, digital and discrete time, just think of them the same. Continuous time, your signal is a continuous time signal that goes through some transformation and you get a continuous time output. Discrete time your input is a discrete time signal. The system operates on discrete time signal and you get an output is a discrete time signal. And in digital you have a quantized discrete time signal, meaning a digital signal and you get an output that also is quantized. Again, these two are going to be the same. We will work primarily in this domain to develop all the mathematics, and then you just need to know when you're going to do the actual implementation, that you're going to need to have a finite number of bits. And so that may limit your accuracy, as, well as but keep in mind that you can be as accurate as you need to be. Thank you.